A dentist suggests eating all of your Halloween candy at once for good health. 50 of the scariest places to be found in all 50 states. And the history of trick-or-treating goes back centuries. These are the weird news segments for today. Tuesday on Weird AF News, which also happens to be Halloween. Happy Halloween! Let's do it. Eating all your Halloween candy at once is better for your health, suggests a local dentist. Do not do that, suggests a local gastroenterologist. (laughs) Okay, so we have a Halloween story. It's Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. The article says Halloween candy stashes will be making their way into local homes. There are steps folks can stay to take out of the dentist's chair. We have here in the story a dentist named Olivia Mason. She works at Almost Heaven Dentistry. She said it's all about exposure time to the sweet treats, but the right course of action might shock you. According to Olivia, quote, It's like much better for your teeth if you sit down and eat your full bag of Halloween candy at one time. I know it might upset your belly, but it's much better for your teeth. Rather than we're going to hang on to this for the next couple of months and every now and then we're going to get in there and get some candy out, this is much, much better. Guys, I hate to say it, but this dentist might have a point. I mean, think about it. What's worse? Spiked blood sugar every single day throughout the next three or four weeks? Or one single super sugar spike followed by throwing up all that candy? Then you get it out of your system and move on with your life. (laughs) Oh, dentists. They're not real doctors, are they? Now, Olivia says that while sugar-free options are obviously the better candy option, there are certain Halloween candies to avoid for better oral hygiene overall. She says, quote, like, like the worst kind of candy for your teeth is the sticky, tacky, chewy gummy. Something like chocolate is not great for your teeth, but it's a lot easier to cleanse and remove from your teeth afterward. Dr. Mason says she normally sees more patients, especially children, coming to her office during the winter months because of this consistent exposure to Halloween candy over time, which is why she suggests you just pound it all in one day. <laughs> just eat all your candy at once, kids, which is, it might be a little foolish. She's, she's kind of ignoring what's truly possible, given that around Halloween, children collect Pounds of candy. Dr. Pounds and pounds of Halloween candy. We also have a county health commissioner named Andrew who's weighing in on this situation. Andrew says it's not just your teeth that can feel the impact. This could impact your daily routine starting the night of trick-or-treating. He says, quote, well, with trick-or-treat being at night, you know, now we're talking about candy before bedtime. That can negatively impact sleep if they have too much of the candy around bedtime. We're already to the end of the story, and nobody's even mentioned diabetes. Are we going to talk about diabetes at all? <laughs> we got two health professionals in this story. Just completely ignoring it. Hey, you might die fat with diabetes, but, you know, at least you got perfect teeth, everybody. That's what we care about is the perfect teeth. I'm hoping children don't come across this story because they're just going to add that to their argument. I can imagine just kids telling the parents, Mom, I just read a story and apparently 9 out of 10 dentists say it's better if I immediately eat this entire giant box of candy in one sitting. This is what the professionals are saying, Mom. So, I mean, I can't agree with eating all your candy at once in a binge session. No, no. You, you got to do the classic Halloween tactic, which is you hide little pockets of candy around the house. You got your little stashes here and there. And if you're a parent, you try to just disallow it around bedtime, of course. That's just common sense. What's your favorite trick-or-treat candy? I had one yesterday, little tiny hundred grand bar that was available at the doctor's office when I went. Oh yeah, that's my favorite. A lot of you know that. What's your favorite trick or treat Halloween candy? Call my show, 646-450-2012. Happy Halloween. The creepiest, scariest places in all 50 states, from rundown prisons to defunct hospitals to hotels with resident ghosts, discover the creepiest spot in your state, if you dare. 
Yes, I thought I would present some of the scariest places in all over the 50 states. This article is very good. And uh, I'm going to begin by some places I've actually been to, starting in California. The Queen Mary. Have you guys heard of the Queen Mary? It's a boat. It's docked in Long Beach, embarking on her maiden voyage in 1936. The elegant Queen Mary carried some of the most prominent people from Winston Churchill to Clark Gable. In 1940, the liner was stripped of her luxuries and retrofitted as a World War II troop ship known as the Grey Ghost. After the war, the Queen, Queen Mary was converted back to a passenger ship and eventually retired from service in 1967. Today, she's docked in Long Beach and serves as a floating hotel. But some ghosts of her past are said to remain. Visitors have reported seeing a lady in white, an engineer who died in the engine room, and even several ghost children wearing 1930s-era clothing. Guests of the Queen Mary can partake in a Haunted Encounters tour to learn more about the ship's legends. Moving on to Massachusetts, they list as the creepiest place the Lizzie Borden House. In 1892, Andrew and Abby Borden were brutally murdered in their Fall River home in broad daylight. Their youngest daughter, Lizzie, was charged with the crime and later acquitted, though many still believe her to be guilty. The murders remain unsolved to this day, and the house has been converted into a bed and breakfast and museum. And those who have spent the night have reported hearing a woman crying and seeing apparitions. A couple of years ago, might have been, have been a year ago, I saw that this Lizzie board and bed and breakfast was up for sale. So, uh, and you can stay, you can actually sleep in the room that the parents were murdered in. Apparently I, I did not do that. I visited the museum though. Uh, yeah. I thought they would do a story out of Salem, Mass, a, another city that I, a city that I lived in for a couple of years. A lot of creepy places there, but they've done the Lizzie Borden ax house. What's that? There's like a, a nursery rhyme or something. It's like Lizzie Borden took an, took an ax, gave her mother 40 wax. When she saw what she had done, gave her father 41 Something like that. I might have butchered it, but it's along those lines. All right, let's go to Tennessee. Something called the Bell Witch Cave. Never heard of this. According to this Tennessee legend, a farmer named John Bell and his family were tormented for years by a witch, thought to be the spirit of a neighbor named Kate Batts. The family reportedly saw strange-looking animals on their property and heard eerie noises in the home. Bell's daughter, Betsy, even felt mysterious pinches and scratches at night. John Bell became ill and died in 1820, thought to be the work of the witch. Some believe that she never left this area, and today you can tour a replica of the Bell family's cabin. You can also tour a cave that's said to be especially haunted with the ghost of the Bell Witch of Tennessee. And lastly, I think it's appropriate to cover our favorite state, Florida. They have some scary place called the St. Augustine Lighthouse, which I've never heard of. Completed in 1874 and still active to this day, the St. Augustine Lighthouse is said to be haunted by several former keepers and their families. The most famous ghosts of the lighthouse are two young sisters, Eliza and Mary, who apparently drowned in the nearby water. Their laughter can supposedly be heard at the top of the tower late at night, when Eliza has been spotted on the grounds wearing the same blue dress that she drowned in. For paranormal enthusiasts, the Dark of the Moon tour takes visitors inside the lighthouse tower and the keeper's house at night. Ooh, that sounds pretty cool. I love doing ghost walking tours, by the way. I've done a handful of them. I think they're pretty amazing. I always thought I'd be good at hosting a ghost walking tour. But I wouldn't be able to help myself. I would have to inject uh, jokes into it, and I don't know if that would ruin the creepy spirit. Anyways, all of these 50 creepy places I will post a link to so you guys can check it out. And maybe there's one in your state that you've been to, or maybe there's one in your state that's creepier than the one they're listing and you'd like to tell me about it. If so, you can email me, funnyjones at gmail.com, and send me a link to this place. I'd like to learn about it. It's all about learning. This is a history lesson. A haunted history lesson. Happy Halloween. Want to create a podcast? Spotify's platform lets you easily make, record, distribute a podcast everywhere. Even earn a little bit of money. All in one place, too. For free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. You record and edit on your phone or your computer. You send it to Spotify and everywhere podcasts can be heard. They even have video podcasting options. 
Spotify for Podcasters allows you to earn money with ads and subscriptions as well. Best of all, it's free. Try it. Download Spotify for Podcasters or go to Spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. And good luck with your podcast. Good luck with your life, man. The history of trick-or-treating goes back centuries. It's that time of year, Halloween, when kids get into costume and walk around the neighborhood ringing doorbells and begging for treats. When you think about it, trick-or-treating is kind of a weird thing. Where did it come from, this story asks. Halloween's origins go back over 2,000 years to the Celtic holiday of Samhain, which marked their new year. Ancient Irish and Scottish people believed the veil between the worlds of the dead and the living grew thin each year on November 1st, allowing demons to roam the earth again. Along with displaying offerings and lighting bonfires for these spirits, the Celts dressed up as the dead, hoping to blend in with the real demons and therefore skirt spiritual confrontations. Fast forward to the 7th century when the Catholic Church was in the business of converting pagan holidays into God-fearing holidays. They turned the Celts demon dress-up party into something called All Saints Day, moving their celebration of the church's heavenly saints to November 1st. The church's holiday was also called All Hallows or Hallomas, with hallow meaning holy. By the early 11th century, the church had also designated November 2nd as All Souls Day, an occasion on which to honor the dead who are awaiting in purgatory before being sent to heaven. All Souls Day became an occasion for door-to-door souling. Poor people would visit the homes of the wealthy, offering to pray for the homeowner's dead loved ones in exchange for something called soul cakes. The practice was soon taken over by children who asked for money, ale, or food. Kids asking for ale. Could I please have some ale, sir? (laughs) You seem a little drunk. How many houses have you been to? Only 14. What about the ale, sir? Now back in Scotland and Ireland, children were doing similar activities, but in costume. They visited households promising not prayers for the dead, but entertainment. Guising children would put on a disguise and bring some talent door to door, such as singing or reciting poetry in exchange for certain treats. You might think that this practice simply migrated along with Europeans to the United States. It was practiced in early 20th century Irish and Scottish immigration communities, but trick-or-treating didn't really spread until the 1920s and 1930s, while Halloween pranking raged. Uh, it says here the the term trick or treat first appeared in the early 20s when several Canadian newspapers used variations of it. We have here a 1923 article published in a Canadian journal describing a quiet Halloween, noting that, quote, treats, not tricks, were the order of the evening. This was begin the beginning of the term. Trick or treat in the U.S. The earliest recorded example of this phrase dates to 1928. We have here in Michigan. Residents claimed something called dreaded Halloween night when they'd encounter on their doorsteps the fatal ultimatum, tricks or treats, uttered in a merciless tone by some small child who clutched in one grubby fist a small chunk of soap capable of eliminating the transparency from any number of your windows. Halloween candy solicitation paused during World War II because of sugar rationing, but it came back stronger. The mid-20th century's growing and thriving suburbs presented ideal routes for trick-or-treating kids, and more individually wrapped candy made the whole process easier for the homeowners. Overall, the practice has taken on a much more innocent tone than its historical demonic, poverty-stricken, or mischievous iterations. Trick-or-treat is now a less literal phrase. A few children today have intentions to pull a prank if they're not offered any candy, and if a house doesn't wish to participate in the fun, they can simply turn off their porch light to avoid the attention of the little ones, not unlike the ancient Celts who played dead to avoid demonic confrontation. Oh, there you have it. The history of trick-or-treating. It comes from demons. Yeah. Demons. Yay! Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Weird AF News, the Halloween edition. I appreciate your time. I want to give a shout out to everybody that reached out to me wishing me a happy Halloween. I I very much appreciate that. It's one of my favorite holidays because it's so weird. I just love it. I'll be going to a Halloween party at a comedy club this evening. That should be pretty fun. I'm going to bring some candy for for the comics. Um, You're wondering, what candy are you bringing, Jonesy? I've, I've decided to keep it simple, and I bought two huge bags of Twix. I like Twix, and a lot of people like Twix. 
Um, one of them is a mint chocolate flavored. I thought that was pretty cool. Twix is doing some good things these days in the um, in the flavor department. Have you had a Twix from other from Asia? <laughs> had some amazing Twix flavors in Japan. I brought back a, when I did my trip. I brought back a bunch of outlandish Twix flavors. Like really, they have so many. We're very limited here in the states for flavors of Twix. It's, it's not fair. It's not okay. We need to import some Twix. <laughs> Anyway, it's enough of the Twix rant, but it's, you know, it's appropriate to go on a candy rant on the Halloween episode of Weird AF News, don't you think? Happy Halloween to everybody. If you want to reach out to me, I left you the number in the email. You can always hit me up on Instagram as well, at Funny Jones. Don't hesitate to slide into my DMs. Wish me a happy Halloween. I got some, uh, some Halloween jokes that I did on a show last week, and I've uh, published them on my Instagram. You can see them there. Yeah, they're pretty good. I got some pretty good Halloween jokes. They're all, they're all right. You, know, you got to have jokes for every uh, holiday, I, it, it seems to me. So I got Halloween jokes, Thanksgiving jokes, Christmas jokes, New Year's jokes. You, know, you got to write jokes for all seasons, it seems to me. If you're going to be a pro, anyways. Although some would argue that I'm not a pro. I don't know if you've seen my YouTube comments on my on my stand-up clips, but they're pretty horrible, man. So, so people are so mean on YouTube. Why? Why is everybody so mean on YouTube? Don't understand it. Can't we all just get along? It's Halloween. Have some candy. Be happy. <laughs> Anyways, I'd, I'd love to see you guys in your costumes too. So email me a photo of that if you'd like, or uh, DM me on Instagram a, a picture of you uh, in your costumes, or your whole family. I mean, that's pretty cool too. I'm 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 down. I love a good costume for Halloween. Anyways, if you guys would like to support the show, go to weirdafnews.com, the official website of Weird AF News, where you can join my Patreon, or you can buy me a coffee for Halloween. Um, I may spend the money on beer. Not going to lie. I like beer. <laughs>